Um, what I'm going to talk about is just some initial uh, background of the heart electrical system. Uh, maybe in a few years since anyone thought about this. Uh, but just basically to uh, remind you that the primary electrical uh, source or generator in the heart is in the uh, top of the atrium, the right atrium. And the electrical signal gets propagated down through a relay center called the AV node, uh, which will allow the signal to then pass into the ventricles through specialized uh, conducting uh, fibers. Now, a pacemaker is designed to uh, stimulate and monitor the heart, and it does this when one of those uh, conduction tracks or points is disrupted or not working well. Uh, here we have the uh, pacemaker uh, box, uh, or IPG, and that is often uh, put under the skin on the left side, uh, left chest wall. It then has uh, often uh, two uh, leads attached to it. One lead will go to the right atrium in this picture, and the second lead will go to the right uh, ventricle. Uh, these leads are important in uh, monitoring uh, heart electrical function and then also supplying the uh, electrical stimulation in the event that the heart is not beating effectively on its own. Um, pacemaker indications, uh, there's a, a number of them. Uh, there is uh, sinus uh, node arrest or uh, failure. There's sinus bradycardia where the heart just beats too slow. There can be dysfunction of that uh, AV node area, uh, uh, the relay center. It could be completely blocked or it could uh, alternate with sometimes uh, uh, being too slow or having temporary blockages. And then lastly, you can have conduction abnormalities uh, lower down. Uh, here we have a picture of the, the first uh, gentleman to ever have a pacemaker. Uh, this uh, man uh, lived uh, 40 years after his pacemaker and without it would have uh, died at a very young age. Subsequently had uh, 26 pacemakers in total. Shows how the uh, technology has advanced and the battery life has advanced. Uh, the take home message of this slide though is that the majority of patients are not pacemaker dependent. So even if there was disruption of the pacemaker, um, their underlying heart rhythm can uh, provide adequate circulation until it can be uh, fixed. Safe access to MRI is a significant uh, need. Uh, 1.5 million patients uh, in the U.S. have a pacemaker. Approximately three of four uh, pacemaker patients will have uh, lifetime indications uh, for MRI. And pacemaker patients may experience suboptimal or uh, riskier care. There can be delays in diagnosis, misdiagnoses, increased risk from alternative imaging strategies. The other thing to point out is that there's kind of a confluence of the patients that need MRI imaging and patients that need pacemakers. Our older patients fall into both these categories. So as you see in this slide, as we age, uh, problems that uh, require advanced imaging, such as strokes, uh, cancers, arthritis, increase. And this is also the patient population that has pacemakers. 80% of uh, pacemaker patients are 65 years or older. Here uh, is a case that you know, hit home to me the importance of being able to scan patients with a pacemaker. This is an 89-year-old uh, patient of mine who presented with visual field changes. And he had a variety of potential causes. He had atrial fibrillation. He had a mechanical aortic valve. He was on Coumadin. Uh, we did a head CT, and it just showed some nonspecific abnormalities. It wasn't until we were able to do the MRI that we clearly defined what his problem was, which in this case was unfortunately a, a malignant brain tumor. But it highlighted to me the importance of being able to provide this information. We were left with a clinical quandary what to do with his anticoagulation, how to treat him, what to tell him and his family, and this really allowed us to uh, get a long way. So what's the problem? I mean, wh why do we worry about pacemakers and MRI? Um, the problem is not that we're going to tear off this pacemaker and it's going to get stuck in the magnet. It's a problem that we have a complex a device with complex circuitry and hardware leads, battery, which may be affected by the MRI environment. So we want to be confident we're not going to alter these. 
As you know, MRI uh, uh, has uh, powerful electromagnetic fields. Uh, the three fields that we commonly think of are the static uh, field, uh, the, the gradient uh, field, and the RF uh, uh, electrical field. All of these uh, could have an effect on uh, a pacemaker. In this slide, uh, we look at the different potential issues uh, uh, that need to be considered when designing uh, pacemakers for an MRI environment. One is heating of the, the case. The other one is force and uh, torque. What effect would that have on the, the case under the chest as well as the, the leads in the heart? Vibration, interactions of the device itself with lead heating or stimulation. The uh, basic bench-to-bedside uh, work really allowed a, a fairly uh, rapid assessment of heating, torque, vibration. And it was found that with uh, newer alloys and uh, design that these issues do not seem to be uh, really of, of significance. What uh, has been of concern for a while, and this has been described in the literature, is heating. As we know, if you have metal in the body, it can heat up during uh, MRI imaging. And in this case, we have a piece of metal that's inserted into the heart. So the concern would be, are you going to heat up this piece of metal that can either alter its function or damage the heart? And additionally, we have to think about stimulation. So this would be situations where the MRI uh, may actually give signals that the um, device interprets as uh, um, being uh, activity of the electrical system, in which case it may shut off, or it may uh, cause it to stimulate and pace inappropriately. Uh, lastly, we have issues of just the device interaction. So, as mentioned, this is complex circuitry with magnetic switches, batteries. We need to make sure we aren't going to be altering these. So, when des designing this des device, these issues were really considered in detail. Uh, the MRI uh, SureScan uh, pacing system was designed and tested. The systematic evaluation of the pacemaker, also termed the IPG, uh, device here, uh, the leads, as we represent two here, and the software. The design and, and development of this was not uh, something that was easy, and I commend uh, Medtronic for what they did to, to take a project that lasted over a decade. And this was initiated in 1997. Uh, with initial uh, developments working with regulatory bodies in 04 to uh, finalizing the, the device and the study and commencing it in 07 to finally completing the clinical trial in 09 and getting a unanimous uh, FDA approval in 2011. Uh, so this has been uh, on the market uh, now coming up to a, a year in the U.S. and had been on the market uh, in Europe uh, before that. When uh, designing the pacemaker, attention was um, kind of taken to the uh, materials to uh, minimize the uh, ferromagnetic content, and additionally, the circuitry, kind of isolating the circuitry from external uh, RF and magnetic signal. The leads themselves also uh, were needed to be specially redesigned. Uh, here we have an image of the traditional Medtronic lead, uh, 5076, and this has been uh, uh, used for a number of years very successfully. Well, it was redesigned, and uh, the new lead is termed the 5086 MRI. And this is a lead that was designed specifically to try to reduce heating during uh, MRI scanning. As we see in this uh, figure here, the 5086 lead, uh, under various conditions, had uh, quite a bit less, in fact, on average, three times less heating than the older 5076 uh, lead. The software itself, and uh, Bill will talk about how the, the software interacts with the device and planning your scanning, but the software was designed uh, uh, to uh, deal with uh, sensing of abnormal electrical activity, it has a safe pacing mode, has uh, uh, system integrity checks that are specifically designed uh, to uh, look for problems that could be developing in that environment, and really it is designed with simplicity in mind especially in regard to your scanning, the idea is that all you need to do is focus on scanning the patient 
there are, are resources and uh, uh, Medtronic uh, representatives there, physicians that can manage the whole other side of it. How about safety? Well, we have now three years, including European data, post-approval clinical experience. Uh, there's been hundreds of MRIs uh, scanned in the U.S. Uh, since uh, this was adopted, and uh, 464 patients were studied in a clinical trial that I'll briefly tell you about. Uh, the lead heating issue has been analyzed in, uh, uh, extensively and, and required that extensive evaluation uh, prior to approval. Uh, just briefly on the uh, clinical study that was uh, used to be presented to the FDA for approval, it was a prospective randomized multi-center study including 464 subjects in 41 centers across the world. Uh, there were MRI and uh, uh, control groups with uh, patients in the MRI group randomized to getting a brain and lumbar spine 9 to 12 weeks after implant or to a control group that would essentially show up in the imaging center, have their device uh, modified for an MRI environment and not undergo a scan. Pacemaker function was then compared before and after with regular six-month follow-up. Now, all of this was done in the uh, context of a rigorous external oversight, uh, both uh, internally and uh, by the FDA. The one issue that I want to bring up, and this is just an important issue uh, as a knowledge base point, is the idea of pacing and the capture threshold. This is how much uh, energy is required to cause the heart to be stimulated, and we measure that in, in uh, voltage. It's an important study endpoint because what can happen is if you damage the heart, you can change the pacing capture threshold. The PCT, as we call it, is lowest in implant, and as a scar forms after implant, the PCT will increase. Now, heating during an MRI, as shown here in the red, may cause tissue damage and increased scar volume. So the question and concern would be, is this going to change the pacing capture threshold and potentially lead a failure to capture or failure to pace? The study looked at this as a primary endpoint, looked at the PCT both in the atria and in the ventricle, and then we see here in the yellow the MRI-treated group and the control-treated group had essentially no change on average in their pacing capture threshold. Now, this is randomly distributed, and there were some patients that had an actual decrease and some that had a small increase that are not considered to be clinically relevant. And in addition, any changes were basically uh, random, as you can see. Both are similar in the MRI and the control group. The conclusion was that there were no discernible difference between the MRI and control groups. The clinical trial conclusions then, there were no uh, uh, major adverse events. Regarding safety, MRI procedure related complications did not occur, and effective pacing uh, was achieved uh, after MRI scanning as well as effective sensing or functioning of the device. Now before I hand it over to uh, Bill, I'm just going to give you a few slides on kind of a cardiology perspective. This is a little uh, snapshot of what you will see as being a programmer that the Medtronic representative will bring with them when they uh, go to uh, evaluate and modify the device. This has a, uh, a wand that will go over the chest and allow direct interrogation. And what the programmer will do is confirm that the system is indeed an MRI conditional one and will not allow you to modify it if it's not and it uses the SureScan software uh, in order to do this activation process. When you uh, interrogate a device, there's a number of pages that we print out showing all sorts of different data, but one that is unique to the MRI SureScan uh, system is this checklist that goes over uh, relevant uh, uh, requirements for scanning from the device being implanted for at least six weeks to being in a pectoral region, uh, to having no additional active implantable devices, confirmation that the leads are attacked and are appropriate, uh, as well as uh, certain uh, measurements of, regarding the pacing capture threshold. Again, this is something that the uh, representative and or the person in charge of the pacemaker will be familiar with. 
At my center, we uh, use a checklist, and this will be available, if not available, on the website of uh, Medtronic's website now. But we have a detailed checklist that we go through so that everyone is comfortable with this uh, new uh, technology. We also have a cardiology order form. It's uh, nice and to have clear documentation that, yes, the cardiologist agrees this is what that was in the patient, and also can provide some guidance to the Medtronic representative how they want them to set this device when you're in scanning mode. So in conclusion, I'd just like to stress that we're really dealing with exciting technology in my mind, uh, both uh, being an imager and a cardiologist, where we can bring these two together and take care of patients that to date have not been able to get MRIs often when they need it. Um, but this is a first generation device, so we've got uh, um, definitely uh, some improvements coming down uh, the pipe, uh, and uh, we'll go over what the MRI conditional labeling means. Uh, lastly, I just look at this as a good opportunity for collaboration, and I hope that this uh, talk will initiate that at your local site. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to Bill. Thank you.